Well, hey, hey, hello there, DFS family. Uh, did anybody notice any new intro music? Ah, well, that's right, man. Uh, welcome to the newly branded uh, Sunday School NFL DFS podcast uh, powered by Fantasy Six Pack. I am your host, Dave Eddy. And as always, I am graced by the presence of my trusty and handsome sidekick, uh, Mr. Patrick Mikowski. Uh, the Sunday School NFL DFS podcast uh, is going to be very similar to our old format, just with a few cheeky little twists. Uh, so it just a little bit over the amount of time it's going to take you guys to cook up some pizza rolls um, on your drive into work. You're going to get uh, the same great information, uh, the same debates, and you can bet your sweet ass is the same trash talk as before, just under a newly branded name. Uh, so before we get started, if you could do us a quick little favor, and just hit that like button. Um, and then at the end, if you enjoyed the podcast, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button as well. Uh, keep a leg up on all your buddies. You guys can swing over to fantasysixpack.net as well um, and check out some more great content. So uh, welcome to the party, Mr. Patrick. How's everybody doing? Excited to get Sunday school kicked off. That's right, man. Getting it kicked off indeed. So uh, we're going to try to speed things along here so that uh, you guys can enjoy this. I'm um, in a little shorter segment, like I said, maybe a little drive to work or, you know, something like that. So we're going to skip over um, week 14 review. And we're just going to get right into week 15, which is what we're going to rock and roll with this week. So, um, Patrick, you want to go ahead and run into some core plays? Yeah, I got I got three guys this week that I really like. Uh, starting off you know, a few weeks ago, you kind of laughed at me because I put this guy in my lineup. Uh, he panned out. He's been panning out. He's been playing some great football. Ryan Tannehill, Tennessee, 6500 bucks this week. Uh, you know, he's got the Texans. Uh, opposing QBs have thrown for three or more touchdowns against Houston in seven of the last nine weeks at a clip of over 280 yards a game. Uh, and Tannehill's going to start this year, 265 yards and two TDs a game, 74% completion rate. I expect Tannehill to have another uh, great week, a uh, couple, you know, probably 300 yards, a couple scores, uh, stay in that same scoring category. Uh, I also really like Chris Carson, uh, Seattle running back this week, 7,500 bucks. Carolina's about as bad as it gets against the run. Running backs have averaged uh, 150 total yards a game, two touchdowns a game against the Panthers. There's no penny to be hawking Carson's carries. He's the clear-cut number one guy, and a workload expected to be somewhere between 20, 25 touches. Uh, he's a horse. We're going to see it this weekend. Huge potential this week from him. And, uh, you know, the struggle every week with this Tampa Bay offense has been, who do I play, Evans or Godwin? Well, this week it's easy because Evans is out. So Chris Godwin, 7700 bucks. Uh, he's going to see a boatload of looks against a horrible Lions secondary that yields over 180 yards and a touchdown a game to opposing receivers uh, at almost a 14-yard a catch clip. So those are my three guys for this week. Yeah, I like Tannehill. Um, I think since he's uh, been the starter uh, over there in Tennessee, he is only behind Lamar Jackson and points scored. I don't know how the fuck that's possible with – uh, with the guys he's throwing to and with Henry getting so many touches in that backfield. But, uh, yeah, he's a great play this week. And kind of copying off your paper a little bit, I got Chris Carson is one of my core plays this week too. Uh, I think it goes almost without saying maybe that uh, Carson's going to be the most owned player uh, on the slate this week. I I could see him. I mean, Cash, he's probably going to be maybe 60%. Um, I could see him in GPPs being in maybe even like the 40-ish area, so it's going to be pretty outrageous. Um, but I think you can play with confidence this week, um, and you might almost have to because uh, I think he does represent some actual you know, good chalk that you just kind of have to play. Uh, another core play for me this week uh, is going to be Michael Gallup. So he's coming in at 5700 so pretty decent price. Uh, last time I talked about Gallup, uh, he went off for almost 27 points. Um, against those lions that uh, <laughs> Pat was talking about there at Mr. Uh, Mr. Godwin. Uh, my logic for Gallup is the same pretty much this week as it was then. Uh, Mari Cooper is very likely to get shadowed by the best cover guy in the league, Jalen Ramsey. 
And this is a game that could get pretty high scoring, which obviously is going to open up some more opportunities for Gallup. Um, you know, just simply on top of the fact that I, I'm going to guess Cooper is going to have a you know pretty pretty low scoring game. So fifty-seven hundred dollars, I think the value um, combined with the you know extra opportunities is kind of going to make him a core play for me this week. But at the very least, I, I think he's a solid pivot. Um, there's quite a few guys that I like this week, but I think. Those are going to be only two guys that I have um, like a majority share in. Uh, what about some chalk that you're going to fade this week, Pat? Yeah, I got you know I got Nick Chubb. Uh, I faded him a couple weeks ago. Uh, did a little bit better than I expected, but uh, Kareem Hunt has been hawking about forty percent of Chubb's touches, uh, and he's been a little bit bigger presence in the passing game for sixteen hundred bucks less. Even though it's a pretty decent matchup against the Cardinals. Uh, I just feel like I'm kind of getting the same production uh, from these two guys. And Hunt's five games back, 13.7 fantasy points a game. Chubb's getting 17.7 fantasy points a game on the season. Uh, I personally am going to fade Chubb. I'm going to save that $1,600 uh, and use it to upgrade maybe a tight end or a wide receiver this week. I got to tell you, do you want to know my absolute favorite part about, about hearing your um, fade this week? Sure. My favorite part is I heard you say Chubb like five times. <laughs> and, I mean, that alone is worth the price of admission right there. Amen um, to that. Amen, brother. So, for me, my, my fade is actually Patrick Mahomes. Um, I mean, I think there's more than a handful of, of decent QB plays this week. Um, so, you won't see me paying up for Mahomes. Even though, oddly enough, at only 300 less, I, I could see a lot of Watson. Um, but that... That Broncos D is pretty stingy against, you know, the pass, but um, eighth best against quarterbacks on the year as well. So I think I'm going to fade him. Like I said, I'd rather save the money and play Watson for 300 less, uh, Tannehill for 600 less. Hell, give me Baker Mayfield for 700 less. Um, if Jameis's hand is is fine, um, I, I'll still take Jameis for 200 less, and I can go on here. But I think you get the point. Um, nothing against Mahomes, obviously, but... It's going to be a little different for me at quarterback this week because I don't have Lamar that I can just throw in there. So I'm going to have to to change it up just a little bit. Um, What about top pivot for you this week, Pat? Speaking of quarterbacks. Yeah, speaking of quarterbacks, I'm rolling out with the book of Eli this week, the New York Giants quarterback after a three-month hiatus. um, And some good luck got his starting gig back last week. He's only coming in at 5,200 bucks, uh, 200 yards, a couple touchdowns last week in a very unimpressive game, uh, working out those cobwebs. Um, and, uh, you know, he's got one of the bottom pass defenses in the NFL with Miami this week. Opposing QBs, 265 yards, two and a half touchdowns a game. Eli Manning is going to get Saquon Barkley involved to get the kid back on track. He's going to spread it around. He's got three athletic receivers that can catch the ball and the freak show coming out of the background. For the price this week, $5,200, a 4X return on this investment is almost a no-brainer for me. I'm going to have at least 30% exposure. Uh, with Eli Manning this week, I think you can plug him in there. I, I gotta tell you, man, I, I don't know that I could. I don't know that I could pull that off. Um, that that's a tough one. I, I'd almost rather have Blau for a hundred dollars more, but um, <laughs> well, I, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. David, we've done uh, that before. I'm not. I'm not joking, but I don't know. I don't. I don't hate the Manning call. I just don't know that I'm gonna. I'm not gonna pay that far down, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Things change from from Thursday to Sunday morning. So who knows? Um, I mean, I'm kind of on the same train that I've been on here for a while for a pivot this week. Um, it's a guy that I feel like I probably talk about almost every week in some fashion. Um, oh, and, crush. Yep. And I'm talking Philip Lindsay here. Um, again, another reasonable price at 5,600 um, absolute smash spot against the KC run defense. So I kind of look at it this way. I kind of say, you know, if you're if you're thinking about paying up for, you know, CMC or Henry or Chubb, Barkley, Fournette, Carson, I mean, on and on. I, I think that 
you know, you're, you're, you're going to have a hell of a time being able to put two of them in there. So you're going to have to, you know, pair that, you know, top tier elite running back with somebody else. And I think Lindsay is a really good choice there. So when I first was looking at this week, I was really looking at putting in something like Henry and Carson. Um, but then it gets a little tricky, you know, the further down you go. So I think that one of those guys along with Lindsay instead of two of those top guys uh, is kind of the best way to spend your money this week. So I don't know. I'm kind of a homer for some reason on Philip Lindsay anyways, it seems. So I guess take it with a grain of salt. But, um, I mean, 5,600, like I said, great matchup against that Kansas City run defense. I, I think you could do a hell of a lot worse. Um, so let's go to kind of the, the trickiest one every week for us. Um, top contrarian play. So um, what, what does the good Lord give your brain as far as a contrarian play, Patrick? Yeah, uh, I uh, take a look at Patrick Laird, uh, Miami, 4500 bucks. Uh, the number one running back in that Miami backfield against a pretty favorable matchup. Uh, the Giants uh, against opposing running backs, 145 yards a game, just under a touchdown a game. Pretty crappy defenses on both sides of the ball here, so I think there's going to be quite a bit of scoring. The ball's going to be flying around. Uh, Laird, 17 touches a game over his last two. He's going to get a pretty steady workload again this weekend. I really think he's going to be a great flex option uh, this week with a floor of 3X. Uh it, it could get pretty uh, pretty crazy in, in uh, New York this weekend. I, I got to tell you, man, when, when I see that, really one thing comes to mind. And I just say, all praise are Laird and Savior. Patrick <laughs> Patrick Laird, my friend. So um, wouldn't, wouldn't touch him just like I wouldn't touch a Lions running back to save my life. Um, difference is this kid can, can catch the ball in the backfield. Um, now granted he really hasn't done a good job of that this year. Um, you know, e- even in the situations he's put himself in. So I, it takes some balls to, to play him. Um, but I mean, he's got four catches each of the last two weeks. Uh, he's been getting a decent, you know, amount of carries. I, I just don't know if he's gonna, you know, get you in the end zone, but 4,500 isn't bad if, if you absolutely have to save some money and it's a contrarian play. So. Um, I mean, I, I can I can see it under those circumstances. Um, I'm going a little different direction. In, instead of kind of a, a little bit of a nobody, I'm going with one of the, the better players in football, uh, just a guy I don't think is going to get a lot of uh, ownership this week, and that's Keenan Allen. So he's coming in at 6300 which just on the surface, the price for someone of his talent is just absolutely outrageous. But, of course, Allen's got to share the ball with Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, Hunter Henry, um, and let's not forget Phillip Rivers has been struggling to the point where, I mean, they're, they're even talking about benching him for Tyrod Taylor, of all people. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that, that add up to people avoiding Allen um, and pretty much the rest of that Chargers team. Like I said, just a lot of miles to feed, and, you know, they're all talented. Um, I mean, what hasn't changed, though, is the fact that, like I said, Allen is one of the top five wide receivers in the game. I, I will I will stand by that all day long. Going up against a very, very vulnerable Minnesota passing defense, I think that this is a week that I'm going to be giving Allen a few extra looks. You know what I really like about the Keenan Allen play, David? Um, What's that? He's got an absolute perfect biblical beard. He does. Moses would be proud. He would be proud. All right. So um, we, we've changed the dart throw um, to our Hail Mary of the week to, to go along with our Sunday school theme. So who's going to be your first Hail Mary uh, of the season, Pat? My Hail Mary is going to be wide receiver Greg Ward in Philadelphia at a $3,000 price tag. No Sean Jeffrey. Potentially no Nelson Aguilar. Not looking promising for him. Greg Ward is the new number one on the outside in Philadelphia. Let that sink in right now. Who? Greg Ward. Right. Uh, Seven or more targets, two of his last three games. Wentz has got to be able to throw the ball to somebody other than Ertz and Goddard. Uh, Ward is going to get some volume. Uh, A 4X value on 3K 
is a pretty modest game. Uh, that price tag is tempting uh, for a guy that's going to get number one targets. I mean, I'll tell you, um, I mean, if Aguilar is out, then I also think that considering that they're facing Washington, um, if Howard is also out, I think that makes Miles Sanders a guy that you kind of are going to have to play. Um, and maybe I'm a little bit on the Miles Sanders train more than I should be, but um, if Aguilar is out and Howard's out, I think Miles Sanders becomes almost 100% exposure for me. That's a lot of ifs, but um, I, I can see them in a must-win game, basically, um, you know, getting ahead and then staying ahead, hopefully, with Sanders. So um, obviously not a Hail Mary play, but that could be another pivot. I mean, you could save a shit ton of money going – um, Sanders and Lindsay, and if you hit on them, the money that you can spend elsewhere is going to just be ridiculous. But um, my Hail Mary of the week, um, ironically enough, uh, his first name is Christian. Uh, his last name is Blake. If you don't know who the hell he is, I don't blame you. Um, it's another one of your Atlanta wide receivers. That I know. know. I know. I don't. I mean, they pass the ball a lot. What do you, What do you want from me, man? Um, yeah, you must pay attention to that practice squad. Like I, nobody's business. Yeah, me and Belichick were up in the press box filming practice, so um, I got a good. I got a good uh, little bit of Christian Blake in my eye. So uh, we got you know Calvin Ridley hitting the IR, so that's going to open up some targets in that passing game. Now we do have Blake and Gage and. Um, Zacchaeus is how you pronounce this kid's name. Uh, caught the big long touchdown pass last week. Uh, the three of them are going to be the benefactors uh, of Ridley being out. Uh, kind of the question is who exactly is going to be the biggest benefactor? And from everything that I can see and everything that I hear, is it's going to be more Christian Blake. Or at least he's going to get the first chance. So I, that's the guy that I'm going to go with. He's only 3,100. Um, I've been sliding him in quite a few lineups. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it pans out. Um, Paris Campbell last week didn't work out so well for us. Um, no. And this is a similar type situation to, to that. Um, it's kind of an unknown. I mean, it could hit easy, just like Greg Ward. I mean, it doesn't take much to get to 12 points. Um, so, so these could work out well. And if you are going to pay up for even one running back this week, I mean, they're also highly priced. You kind of have to. You kind of have to slide some stuff in there. Um, and I think Christian Blake um, is low enough price that instead of maybe having to, to be a little iffy or maybe, you know, severely downgrade two options, you can, you know, kind of double dip and, and downgrade with him but still have a little bit of upside. Um, another guy that I want to talk about real quick um, that I think is an interesting play this week. I don't know what I'll own of him, uh, but it's actually Kyler Murray. Uh, I was really in on Kyler Murray early on in the season, um, and then I've kind of gone away from him a little bit. He's been struggling lately. Um, but he actually has a pretty decent matchup this week against Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland's been pretty good against quarterbacks this year. The exception has been quarterbacks that can run around, and obviously Kyler Murray can do exactly that. I can see him being pretty low-owned uh, just because he hasn't been so hot, like we said, recently. And so I think Murray might be a guy that I can slide in at $5,600. Uh, gets me below a lot of my um, quarterback targets for the week. So that's just something to keep in mind. We'll see what happens come Sunday. Uh, but Kyler Murray could be someone that I'm actually in on that I that I didn't talk about. Um, anything else that you want to add for week number 15, Patrick? I really don't got anything, Dave. It's, it's pretty straightforward for me this week. Uh, I got I got probably about ten lineups built already. And my core three are in every single one of them. Um, Tannehill and Eli, you know, flip flopping back and forth for the QBs for me. All right, well, all right, everyone. So if you enjoyed the podcast, again, do me a quick favor, uh, hit that like button for me. And if you think that you picked up something of use here, or you think that Patrick is cute, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. Um, but that will do it for the first rendition here um, of the brand new Sunday School NFL DFS podcast powered by Fantasy Six Pack. Again, I'm Dave Eddy. Uh, you can find me at Corporal Eddy on Twitter. And that was my man, Patrick Makowski. You can find him at PattyMac33 on Twitter. So best of luck to everyone, and I will play it out. Good luck. <laughs>